If you want to make good decisions about your health, you need to be wary of anecdotes and testimonials. If you're someone who trusts other people's experiences with medication, natural products, and alternative therapies, you are one of the people I can hardly ever reach because I trust scientific data and you trust personal experience. Let's see if we can't find common ground. In order to make decisions about healthcare, we need information or data. For example, if you want to know if Reiki or energy healing can help you heal, you need data. Let's look at testimonials. This is Juan. Juan had a bad flu. It wasn't getting any better. He tried ibuprofen, but he felt he was getting worse. So he called upon his friend, who is a certified Reiki master. He did two sessions with her, and he started to feel better. After three sessions, his flu had gone away. Ergo, Reiki works. This is Palmyra. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. Her friends told her she needed to try Reiki because it had worked for one of their co-workers. She did. She credits energy healing with making her feel less nauseous and with helping to shrink down and kill off the tumor. She is now cancer-free. Ergo, Reiki works. This is Catherine. Catherine has had diffuse pain throughout her body for over 10 years now. She heard about Reiki on the news and decided to give it a try. Her therapist suggested she come in twice a week for a total of 12 sessions. Catherine says she feels better now on most days. She will continue to see her therapist. Ergo, Reiki works. When we add these testimonials with other similar anecdotes, it may look as if we have a strong body of evidence in favor of Reiki. I mean, look at all these marbles. But the plural of anecdote is not data. Here's what the anecdotal evidence didn't tell us. Juan had a self-limiting illness. The flu does not last forever. After a number of days, it slowly goes away, regardless of what you do. Also, he started Reiki when his symptoms were at their worst, which means that necessarily their severity went down the next day. It's called regression to the mean, and it happens regardless of what you do. So did Reiki really help Juan? Or would the course of his illness have been the same without it? We don't know. Palmyra credits the Reiki for making her less nauseous, but she was also given anti-emetics, medication that reduces nausea. So did the Reiki really help? We don't know. Moreover, she was feeling nauseous because she was undergoing chemotherapy. By the way, she also had a mastectomy. So what got rid of her cancer? Was it the chemo and the surgery or the Reiki? Did the Reiki help at all? We have no way of knowing. Catherine says her pain became more manageable. If we had asked Catherine to fill out a pain questionnaire every day, we would have noticed that her pain levels fluctuate from day to day. Turns out how she rated her pain before the Reiki and after the Reiki no difference. Same fluctuations. She's remembering the bad days before the Reiki and the good days after the Reiki. But the number of good days and bad days before and after the treatment are the same. Why is she doing this? Because we all do it. 
especially when we forked over $845 to undergo 12 sessions of Reiki therapy. But if we base our evaluation on what she now tells us, we can't know if Reiki works or not. The colored marbles represent dirty data. This is information that was gathered in a non-scientific way, and it is contaminated because of variables that were not controlled for. The data are biased by regression to the mean, self-limiting illnesses, multiple treatments used at once, confirmation bias, and the placebo response due to a significant investment, and also because dead men tell no tales. We never hear from the people who used Reiki and just kept getting worse and died. We only hear from the survivors. The white marbles represent clean data. This is information that we gather using rigorous scientific experiments that tried very hard to minimize variability and biases. I know, it's impossible to get a squeaky clean data set, but this is as clean a data set as we can humanly manage. We need a clean data set so that clinicians can make the right decisions and you can know which product will help you get rid of your sniffles or your cancer. This is not a body of evidence that is useful. We can't trust our own anecdotes. We aren't aware of all the variables that influence our outcomes. That's why we need clean data, scientific studies, randomized trials, and then systematic reviews of these trials to minimize these variables. Dismissing anecdotes should not offend you. If you want treatments that work, you should dismiss anecdotes as well. So, which is it? The dirty data or the clean data? You choose. Thank you.